Hi, my name is Bill Martin, and I'm the Program Manager for Rockwell Automation's Networked Components Group. And today we're going to talk about smart devices. Uh, smart devices is really the foundation of the connected enterprise. It's, the, uh, it's where the, all the data comes from to make a machine smart, and smart machines make smart factories, so our users can make their products in a more efficient manner. So there's three types of smart devices. There's smart motor controls, there's smart sensors, and there's smart safety devices. So let's talk about smart motor controls first. There's three types of motor controls. Uh, we have full voltage starters, which they are the old traditional method of controlling the motor, which is the foundation of our company. Uh, we have soft starters, which uh, slowly start up a motor, and then they slowly stop them. And we have variable frequency drives, which is really the, the latest technology for controlling a motor, in which it really controls the, the rotational speed of an electric motor. So let's start with uh, full voltage starters. Our uh, smart full voltage starters are really begin with the, uh, the E300 electronic overload relay. It measures current, voltage, power, energy, and with those different data points, uh, we can help you predict uh, different motor failures or even operational failures. So, so for example, let's say uh, your motor is mixing something and it's getting thicker and that, that motor current's just getting higher and higher and we can tell the operator that you know, at the rate that you're going, um, you're going to trip in about 120 seconds, 119 seconds, 118 seconds. Um, this gives the operator some information where he can say that, well, you know, I only need to go about 45 more seconds, so yeah, I should be OK. Let me finish up this batch, and then I'll call the maintenance guys, and we'll have them come down. Uh, in the past, what would happen is the, uh, the motor would just go, and all of a sudden it would just stop and trip, and everyone would start freaking out figure out, hey, why did this thing trip? And about two hours later, they kind of figure out, oh, yeah, the, the batch was too thick. Uh, so it's just simple things like that where we can help make the manufacturing process a, a lot more easier. Uh, if we look at uh, energy values from a smart motor controller, um, we can use those to help uh, lower our energy costs uh, by looking at uh, peak demand values or even kilowatt hours. Uh, we can help detect if um, we're monitoring an air compressor you're on a Sunday when you're not producing anything, but yet you're consuming some kilowatt hours, mm, why is that occurring? Everything should be off. Uh, that just gives you an indication that there's some air leaks in your, uh, in your air compression lines. So now let's talk about the variable frequency drives. So the new 755T product family has a feature called uh, motor control adaptability. So it's going to watch that motor, and as it's, it's doing its thing and it's getting older, it's not working as efficiently as it should be, the variable frequency drive is going to uh, adjust the, the voltage and the, the current to accommodate for the, the poor performance of the motor. It'll also provide a, an indication to the operator or to the maintenance staff that, you know, this, something's going on with this motor. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adapt for it, but you guys should check this out so that we can uh, uh, get it repaired at the next uh, maintenance schedule. Um, sometimes people are a little fearful of all this uh, smart motor control stuff. It may look kind of complicated, but um, Rockwell Automation is trying to make that really easy. If you ever had to replace any of these smart devices, um, our control logics processors have a feature called automatic device configuration. So what that means is that the, the logics controller itself has all of the configuration data from all these smart devices. So the maintenance person, when he's told, you know, swap out the overload relay, he physically goes out, takes it out, pops in the new one, plugs in the cable, and voila, he's done. He can actually walk away. The PLC will re-download all the configuration data, and the system's back up and running uh, as it should be. So it's just, even though they kind of appear to be complicated devices, they're really not. You just plug them in, and they kind of uh, self-heal themselves. Now, the second type of smart device is our smart sensors. Uh, sensors are really just real basic devices. They're just on, off, real, real simple, uh, like a photoelectric switch or a, a limit switch. Uh, nothing too fancy there, but uh, um, you can either wire them into a traditional digital input of a programmable logic controller. But one thing that's unique with Allen Bradley sensors is that they also have an I.O. link communications capability built inside. So you, you can just order one catalog number. You can either wire it up directly into a digital input, or you can take those same wires and put them into an I.O. link master scanner. And now you can start communicating to this simple little device. So you can still get the, the on-off type sensor and signals from the smart sensor, but it also has additional diagnostic parameters. So a great example is with the, uh, um, the photo switches, is that 
It can detect its signal strength. So as the signal is getting weaker, um, it can alert the operator that, you know, your, your signal isn't as strong as it used to be. And this is typically an indication that the, the front lens of that, that sensor is getting dirty. It's caked with some dirt or goo or, or whatever. Um, and so we can let the operator know that, you know, at the next scheduled maintenance time, um, why don't you go and wipe off all your sensors because they're getting a little dirty. In the past, we didn't have this. Uh, basically, the production line would shut down. Again, everyone would freak out. Hey, why, why is this going down? And uh, people would be scrambling all over. Two hours later, they come to find out that, you know, all we need to do is just kind of wipe off the lens. So again, just a smart sensor letting you know that the lens is a little dirty uh, can save a significant amount of unplanned downtime. All right, finally, our third type of smart device are our safety sensors. So uh, a safety device is used to protect uh, an operator from a, uh, receiving a bodily injury or, or harm. You know, probably the most famous one is a, is a typical e-stop. You press the e-stop and everything just kind of shuts down. Uh, in the uh, traditional way of e-stops, uh, let's say you had about 20 of them lined around your particular machine. Uh, operator would accidentally, or would hit an e-stop no one would really know when the maintenance crew would come down which, which e-stop was, was pressed. So they'd actually, have to, they'd actually have to go out and look at each individual e-stop to, to figure it out. And then once they found the right one, then they would go repair the machine. Well, that could take a, a long time. So now our, our safety devices are on a network. In fact, um, they just recently created the GuardLink network, which allows you to really easily put on different sensors. It reduces a lot of wiring. But then you can also get some diagnostic data out of these sensors. So when an e-stop does get pushed, uh, the operator will be able to see which specific one was pushed. So if one gets pushed, you can see that, oh yeah, it's the, the third one by the left door. So let's go send maintenance down there. And another example of a smart safety device is a light curtain. Uh, very similar to our smart sensors, they have the capability to look at the different signal strength of that light curtain. So as it's starting to get dirtier, the signal strength will go down, and we can alert the operator or maintenance staff that, you know, maybe the next scheduled maintenance time, you should wipe down those, those light curtains. And again, in the past, um, it would just fail. You'd have a lot of chaos trying to figure out, hey, why did this thing turn on? And, you know, two hours later, oh, we just need to wipe down the, the light curtain. And finally, working with our partner company, PTC, we can take smart safety devices, and um, we can help calculate Overall e equipment efficiency, or OEE, uh, what that means is that um, you know, a, a piece of equipment can produce so much product in a certain amount of time, and we don't want to have any downtime. So however, we could look at the operations of this machine. So for example, if uh, Bob on third shift always seems to be hitting that e-stop uh, five times every time he's at work, but yeah, if you look at uh, Tom and Sue on first and second shift, they, they never hit that e-stop. So that's kind of interesting. So the, the solutions from PTC can come in, and we can see that, oh, yeah, let's go talk to Bob. Let's see what's going on during his shift. So in general, uh, smart devices are really the foundation of the, the connected enterprise, whether it's our smart uh, motor controllers to help um, either predict when a motor is going to fail, or if it does fail, let's make sure we get that thing up and running as fast as possible to our safe safety devices, where we can look at um, which device was was uh, operated, and maybe even figure out the overall equipment effectiveness of a machine. And finally, our smart sensors, uh, we can use those not only to do, detect our basic on-off uh, position of a product or something, but um, we can determine when they're starting to get uh, dirty or about to fail, just to let uh, operations know um, they should clean it so we can, again, prevent unplanned downtime. So again, my name is Bill Martin, and hopefully you learned a little something about smart devices.